Well, I've just spent um, the last few days driving the Aston Martin Rapide. Um, we all know Aston's are really cool cars, but this is their sort of, their sensible car, they like to think. It's a four-door, four-seater Aston. Um, it's not quite as sporty as the DB9, shall we say, on the car it's based. It's, uh, I'm surprised in the spec, it's actually quite a heavy car. We're up to 1990 kilos with this um, Aston Rapide. And it strikes me, it's actually very close to the car I normally run around in, which is the Maserati Gran Turismo. And I thought it might be quite fun just to do an Evo Dari on the pair of them, just to sort of get a sense of what these cars offer. Um, it's one of those cars you sort of spy in the classifier and say, oh, rapid, oh, about £80,000, that's amazing, amazing price. I mean, this car list um, is around 150000 but this one's got the Lux pack, so you actually get DVD screens in the back and out, even more luxury. So you're probably looking at about 160000 for this car. As we know, the Gran Turismo, it's a much cheaper car, it's about uh, 92 list that car. But look at them second hand and both of them are tantalizingly close it's about you can pick them up for a, a rapid now for about eighty thousand and a 4.7 uh gran turismo for about fifty thousand they're a little bit closer once they've you know done a few miles anyway rapid what's it like beautiful car to drive um aston have really got some polish to the dynamics these days and uh it has a sort of bank vault feel inside really nice um controls um, but what this car's really about is obviously its space. As you expect of all Astons, it's a beautifully designed car, ultra sleek. I mean, it's stunning. It's just stretching the wheelbases. It helped the looks even further. Just around the rear, it sort of looks like um, a Vantage V8 rather than the um, DB9 it's based on. Of course, it's got the V12. But the whole res and depth of this car, it's a four-door four car. So you have these really quite big doors um, but the surprise is when you open them yes even, even from here it looks a little tight and this is one of the surprises things on this car it's a great big car it's actually um, about a hundred mil longer than the uh, Maserati but actually getting in and out of this car it's a bit tight you don't expect it on when you look on the outside and this great big door even in the front that's quite a small space to get your legs in and then really quite a tight uh, footwell and then that's quite high that center console is really quite high inside as well when you move around to the rear well it's even tighter um, I I was uh, probably the, probably the way I can uh, sort of summarize what it feels like in there it's like if Ryanair did first class that's sort of what it feels like in the back seats really close your feet don't quite tuck underneath but you're surrounded by these beautiful um, finishes and it's lovely leather and it just feels super quality inside but it is a bit tight compare that to the Maserati only the uh, obviously the one door but look at that difference in space to get in and out of that car it's dead easy you don't even notice it low sill piece of cake seats in the back yes it's not as elegant to get in but the seat goes forward uh, electronically before you have to clamber in and in actual fact once that's forward, that is actually a much easier uh, rear compartment to get into than the Rapide. It's a real surprise. Um, I was hoping the Rapide would offer more space uh, and easier to get in and out. And it's also one of those really annoying cars where as soon as you get any dirt uh, on the Rapide, it will instantly go on your trousers because there's such a wide sill to climb out of. Both the front and the rear, you get it all over your trousers every time you get in and out of it once you've got a dirty car. But it has some other great features, the Rapide, so it's not all bad news. One of the best bits about the Aston is it's a V12. It's a great big unit, the Aston V12. Um, just squeezes in there. Look at the size of those uh, rocker covers. That really takes some packaging back. Um, delivers, delivers in this car um, a 470 horsepower. The Maserati is about 440 horsepower. Uh, Aston's got a torque advantage, it's about 470 uh, foot-pounds, where the uh, Maserati is about 380, but as I say, Maserati 100 kilos lighter, so it doesn't actually feel like that on the road, and this feel, the Aston feels much longer geared, and so it's just a little, it's more relaxed behind the wheel, while the Maserati always has this sportier feel, the revs of the engine, it it's, goes to 7.5, while this thing's all done and dusted by about 6.5, uh, maximum power is 6,000 on the Aston, but it's a real elastic, lovely V12, so I'm not complaining about the engine in it at all.
here's another really cool thing. The Aston Rapid is a hatchback, as you see there, and even the seats fold down for added practicality. If you don't just buy an Aston for the way it looks, let's go and find out how it drives. Yes, and as with all Astons these days, you get this as a key, which is a little bit of a pain to live with because you can't sort of strap it onto anything. You can't put it on a key ring. It's it's its own thing, and it looks like a transponder. So you sort of expect the doors to unlock as you you know approach. None of that. But anyway, it's, it is it's like a quality item. It does define Aston, as does that sound. Yeah, Doctor Betts is telling me. He likes the sort of subtle V12 sound rather than the sort of blare you get from Ferrari or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's very well judged. As soon as you get in this car, as I say, it's, it's quite relaxing. It's, own, it's auto only. There's no, no manual option. There's no um, automated manual gearbox option either. Fully auto, six speed ZF. And I'm enclosed, I'm more enclosed than I expect to be in a car like this. You sort of see the amount of glass area, it's not as big as you expect. And funny enough, the windscreen's quite small as well when you're looking out. It, it has a very sort of enclosed feel. It's um, there isn't a huge amount of glass, and uh, for a, you, know, you look on the outside, it looks huge, and inside, I'm instantly quite tight. Um, I'm very surprised how high this centre console uh, sits. I think it's I think it's just to take the vent to the back seat, but uh, it seems remarkably high to me. And then I'm sort of squeezed in this way as well. I think it's part of this uh, aluminium structure, you know, like you get in and out of the lease. And they're really tight because of the giant seals, and it's a bit like that with this Aston. Very different than the Maserati, it's a much bigger, this is lower, and it just feels more open, bigger uh, glass area as well. So there's an instant key difference when you get in. But it's this, it's sort of like Bentley, it's with the Conti GT, yeah? very good at wafting. And that's what this Rapide does as well, and that's a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting it to be that sort of car. So I've just got it in normal drive at the moment, and um, it, it changes up it's like 1,500 revs or something like that. So it's really, really subdued. You hardly just sense the V12 growl, but very quiet. And having lived with it, I've done about oh, 500 miles of it now. It's so, it feels so long-legged and such a good cruiser. It's, it's, it's very easy to get uh, to like this car on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, yes, it's an Aston. It has that. Okay, it has that special feel. But this is a this is a car that needs using every day. It's a super quiet and also super stiff. And I don't mean that suspension-wise. I mean just in structure. It's quite a bumpy road. This, but it feels vault-like in here. It feels really well put together. This car. And uh, everywhere else is beautiful Alcantara. Every sort of surface you touch is, is nicely finished, they've really thought about it. And this one also has the B&O stereo 1000 watt system, so pretty full on on the sound as well. DVDs in the back as well, but you don't want to sit at the back, no. Yeah, those seats, I, I would suggest this car is really, a, uh, it's better described as a sort of 2 plus 2. It's, to call it a true four-seater, I'm sorry, Aston, but this isn't a true four-seater. The compromised seats at the back, uh, as long as you accept it like that, it's like a usable DB9. And the other nice thing I like about it is DB9, the seats never quite go back as far as you want them. This one, I can put the seat back and I can hardly reach the pedal, so that's the added advantage. This is a, this is like a usable DB9. There's several different sorts of car in there. If you just press a few buttons, then you just get a different sort of Aston. Press Sport, it's subtly uh, noisier on the exhaust, but it's sharper on the throttle, 
slightly better on quicker on the gear changes um, but but not uber sporty it doesn't go crazy stiff or anything like that I've got adaptive dampers on another button so it just does very subtle improvements which makes sense to me obviously I can use the paddles six-speed gearbox like uh, Maserati torque conversion on this so not the speed of change that I'm used to in the Maserati um, but then that sort of suits this car. It's so well calibrated, this automatic gearbox. Someone spent a lot of time doing calibration of the gearbox, feel the brakes, feel the steering. Yeah, you never tire of that V12. It's such a statement, isn't it, of Aston today. Great, great noise, the V12. So summing up, how's the FP been? Well, it's been a great car to, to live with. It's just that comfy parachute, as soon as you get in, it just feels easy, lovely to live with, relaxing. Um, but against the Maserati, that's a bit more interesting. The Maserati has a little bit more verve about it, it just feels that a little bit more sporty. But I love the steering on this, I'd swap the steering and the uh, brake feel and the progression on the throttle from the Aston, it's better than the Maserati there. But while this car, with those rear doors, it almost over-promises. You think, oh, it's a true four-seater. But when you get to use it, you realise how compromised it actually is in the back. And I am really quite tight in here. Well, the Maserati is this coupe, super sporty coupe. And you don't really expect it to take four people. But actually, it's a much better rear seat uh, environment uh, to live in than it is in the back of the Rapide. So it, it sort of over-delivers where it's under-delivers. So that's why, at the moment, because I really do use the back seats, the Maserati will stay. But this Rapide, it's, it is a nice car. I, I think you need to live with it. With, um, you need a certain window if you're going to use rear seats. And if you know, you've got kids up to the age of 16 or something like that, then you could use this car. Being, yeah, Maserati stay. 